On the 19th of November 2019, we drove over 160 miles to pick up our beautiful new family member, Corliss. Upon meeting her, she was very curious, although a little frightened. We instantly knew she was perfect. She came to us with the name Rio, a very popular one for the macaw species. We decided to rename her Corliss, meaning carefree, as that's exactly what we intended her life to be like. She didn't have an overly great start to life. Due to a lack of research, her first owners weren't prepared for the responsibility of handling a bird of such spirit. And after the first bite, Corliss was locked in a cage, out of sight and out of mind. Her second home was much better and filled with much love. However, due to unexpected life changes, she could not stay. And this is how we got her. The first month was tough. We quickly realised macaws spoke a very different language to cockatiels. And Corliss was a macaw with no manners. So you could say that her language was a little bit rude. She used her beak very harshly at first, through no fault of her own. You see, Corliss had never been taught how to control her bite strength and used the same pressure for everything. This often hurt and left many, many marks. We were very surprised to come learn that she didn't even know how to step up. Due to a lack of opportunity to fly in her last two homes, Corliss had developed something called muscle atrophy. This resulted in a lack of balance as she could not open her wings. This pesky muscle atrophy made learning to step up very difficult. A few weeks into Corliss staying with us, we actually ended up moving house, which was very stressful for everyone involved. Although the birds did not realise this, it was going to be so much better for them. The new house meant that they got their own bedroom. Having their own bedroom also allowed us to get rid of Corliss's small cage that she had lived in for four and a half years. Upon getting her new cage, she was very frightened. She didn't know what to do with all of the room suddenly provided to her. It also very quickly became apparent that Corliss wasn't comfortable sitting on perches. She slept hanging onto cage bars. We thought this may have been due to a lack of space in her old cage. However, every time she chose to sleep holding cage bars instead of on any comfortable perch we provided for her. We managed to fix this issue with the help of a friend flying Orion over on Instagram. Corliss was encouraged to use new and thinner perches by placing her favourite toys in the centre of the cage where she had to sit like a bird to play with them. Although this took a lot of time, she grew more and more comfortable in positioning herself like a bird. As time passed, Corliss got more and more comfortable with us. This meant that sometimes she wanted to be the one to set the rules around the house. For example, there was one time she did not want to go to bed and she let us know by very harshly biting my partner's finger. After Nash, my partner, eventually got Corliss away, we ended up having to go to A&E to ensure that the finger wasn't broken. Luckily, it wasn't. However, Corliss did leave permanent nerve damage and this was just the beginning of macaw tantrums. These are much worse than a child's tantrums, if you didn't guess. Nash and I had to adapt the way we lived in order to work around these childish behaviours. <laughs> At least when your kid throws a tantrum, they won't give you hearing loss or potentially send you to the hospital. If they do, you don't have a human child, you have a bird. Knowing that Corliss didn't have the fantastic start in life that she deserved, we wanted to ensure that the rest of her life was going to be great. This meant filling up plenty of stimulation and fun. From what we knew, Corliss had never experienced the outer world. So one chilly morning, we decided it was time. Nash put Corliss's leash on her little foot and then they ventured out into the back garden. Our gorgeous Christmas chicken was so happy to see the great world. She observed everything very carefully with crazy macaw eyes. We absolutely adored seeing her so happy. Following this, Walks were a common thing. It got to the point that Corliss had learned the word out and would often yell at us that she wanted out, meaning outside. This may seem very cute, but have you tried to tell a macaw that they cannot go outside because you need to leave for work or the weather is too bad? Her response was usually a tantrum. As I briefly mentioned earlier, Corliss had muscle atrophy. This meant that our muscles had wasted away due to not being used. Obviously, we wanted to help fix this, as it was clearly very uncomfortable for her. This meant that we had to encourage our Christmas chicken to fly. You'd think this would be an easy task, however, this bird hadn't flown since she was a baby. Convincing her was a lot more difficult than we had thought. We started by walking up and down the stairs, running with Corliss and showering her. 
All of this encouraged her to open her gorgeous wings and flap them even just a little bit. Through time, she built some muscle. This entire mission was very difficult though. We were essentially trying to convince a very lazy being to go from couch to 5k with no motivation. Corliss did not want to fly, for she had never had to fly to go places. Her old owner carried her everywhere she wanted to go. Finally, after many weeks of trial and error, she decided to let go and take her first flight. She graced the air very clumsily, but got better with every flight back to the perch. Trying to teach Corliss to recall was very difficult too. She had no motivation to come to us, even when we had tasty treats. Nothing would motivate her. Upon speaking to Daddy Human from Mikey the Macaw, we realised that they encouraged Mia to recall by placing her on Daddy Human. Mia didn't like Daddy Human and wanted off him instantly back to Mummy Human. We thought this was an amazing plan and wanted to try it ourselves. However, when we placed Corliss on me, her less favoured human, she didn't budge. We both just froze and stared into each other's souls, unsure of what should happen next. This plan was scraped and we were back at square one. Over time, we befriended Feathered Frank over on Instagram, who used to work with Rescue Macaws. She gave us many tips which helped us help our little green bean. In the end, we actually ended up using a similar method to that of Mikey the Macaw, but we didn't use a human that Corliss didn't like. We used height. Corliss didn't like being close to the ground. She didn't feel comfortable taking off of perches due to still not having fantastic balance, but she was happy to fly from a flat surface. The very first time she recalled, she actually climbed onto the poof from the floor herself. And from there, her training continued. She quickly gained strength by ascending and skill by descending. On the 9th of July, 2020, our Christmas chicken met another macaw, a dragon, if you will. She wasn't sure how to handle this interaction, as Orion, also known as Flying Orion on Instagram, is naturally very playful and in your face. Having not seen another macaw for almost five years, this was very scary for Corliss. However, we had hoped that Orion would help Corliss see what she is, a majestic beast that was meant to soar the skies. That day, we went for a free flight with Orion and Nova so that Corliss could admire these birds doing what they were meant to do. We hoped that she would become inspired by them and the inspiration was definitely there but it resulted in Corliss breaking her leg leash because she wanted to also be free. Later that year, we got invited to attend a parrot meetup organised by Motley's Adventures on Instagram. We obviously jumped at the opportunity, packed our bags and headed south towards the event. There were many free flyers among us and this greatly excited Corliss. She would scream at them and flap her wings because she was desperate to join as they soared over her. We knew she also wanted to flock with them However, could not allow it. Our Christmas chicken just did not possess the skills or strength required to free fly, yet. That's right, our aim for this beautiful girl has always been free flight. Seeing all of these macaws got us and her motivated to train even more. And this is what we have been doing since we have returned. The weather is too cold currently to allow Corliss to have our first free flight but come spring, we will be ready to take that leap together. We hope you have enjoyed our first year of Corliss and like us, look forward to many, many, many more adventures.